ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله جل وعلا for indeed the best of the speech is the speech of Allah سبحانه وتعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the best of guidance is the guidance of our noble prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها and the worst of all affairs are those newly invented matters that is deen of Islam <coughs> فإن كل محدثة بدعة for indeed every innovation is, mis- is an innovation every newly invented matter is an innovation وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أعاذن الله وإياكم من النار and for indeed every innovation lead you astray and lead to the hellfire we seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from being amongst the people of the hellfire Amin <coughs> إباد الله أيها المسلمون فإني أوصيكم ونفسي المقصرة في هذا الشهر العظيم والفرصة سانحة بأن نقترب إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى وذلك بفعل ما أمر الله حسب الاستطاعة واجتناب ما نهى عنه سبحانه وتعالى في هذا الدين العظيم A usual reminder from myself and for all of you my dear brothers and sisters of Islam especially while we're still rejoicing in this blessed season of the month of Ramadan, this great opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presented His servant with in this blessed month, the month of Ramadan, the month of khair, that we should strive harder every moment of our lives to get and draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> trying to be from the muttaqoon, the pious and the righteous, and that is by fulfilling the obligations to the best of our abilities, and then to stay and refrain away from the prohibitions and to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincere repentance and asking and begging Him subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness of our sins and our shortcomings. Naam, ibad Allah. Bil amsi kunna ننتظر هذا الضيف الكريم هذا الشهر العظيم شهر الخيرات شهر العتق من النيران شهر رمضان وفضائله معلومة لديكم وها نحن اليوم قد انتصفنا هذا الشهر نحن في نصف هذا الشهر أو قريبا منه فمن كان منا عباد الله قد اغتنم أول نصف هذا الشهر في الخيرات وفي القربات وفي الطاعات فليحمد الله سبحانه وتعالى على توفيقه ومنه وإحسانه وليستمر على هذه الطريق وليثبت عليها بل وليضاعف الجهود فإنما الأعمال بالخواتيم It seems like yesterday we were asking one another <coughs> When Ramadan will come, the sighting, anybody sighted the moon, this, that. Now we, all, we almost, if it's not, we're in the, in, the, in the middle of Ramadan. Subhanallah. How fast the days go by. 
ولا نمر له في رمضان the month of khair the month that has a lot of virtues as you know so now as for those amongst us who they were mindful of this great opportunity and they utilize it for their benefits <coughs> because whatever we do we benefit ourselves for those amongst us in the first part of this blessed month of Ramadan we were mindful of our time our actions our statements <coughs> and we have spent most of our times upon obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing the actions that get us closer to our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course by fasting the days and standing in, in a prayer with the Muslims in a taraweeh and a masjid and, and utilizing our time by doing all of actions of obedience such as reading the book of Allah with contemplation, with reflection and learning the sound meanings of what we read and try to implement it in our lives and to correct our mistakes and our shortcomings <clears throat> And the sadaqat some of us we gave and, and the commanding of good and forbidding the evil as legislated amongst many acts of obedience such as attending the congregation for men in the masjid, not just on Jumu'ah on Taraweeh, but for those who are able and they were zealous and diligent in attending the congregation, coming way early to the masjid and staying Sometimes the masjid, mashallah, <clears throat> you come for dhuhr and you think you come in Jumu'ah. Dhuhr on Tuesday or Monday, you think you're in, coming on Jumu'ah. And this is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the hearts of the believers, the hearts of the Muslims are opened for khair in this blessed month of Ramadan. So those amongst us who are doing good in this first part of this blessed month of Ramadan, thank Allah first because tawfiq is from Allah. To be upon the right path has nothing to do with where you come from. or It has to do with tawfiq. Allah wants good for you. So thank Allah and praise Him. And be consistent upon that. Be firm upon that path that Allah has guided you to. And rather plan from today, from this moment, to increase the acts of obedience in whatever remains from this blessed month because al-a'malu bil khawatim actions are judged in accordance to the last thing you do and you die upon as'awullah an yakhtima li wa lakum bi ahsan al-a'mal we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cause us to die upon a righteous deed I mean na'am ibad Allah hada al-shatru tani al-thani min hada al-shahr al-azim fihi khayrun kathir wa fihi fadail ففيه العشر الأواخر وفيه ليلة القدر التي هي خير من ألف شهر وفيه زكاة الفطر نعم عباد الله إلى ذلك من الصيام ومن القيام ومن تلاوة القرآن ومن الصدقات والإحسان إلى المحتاجين وبدل الزكوات لمستحقيها إلى غير ذلك من الأخلاق العظيمة ومن الشرائع الجليلة شرعها الله لنا سبحانه وتعالى <coughs> There is a great things that we as Muslims Alhamdulillah we will benefit in this second part of Ramadan because coming upon us beautiful nights and days the last 10 days and nights of this blessed month of Ramadan. <clears throat> These are the best days, the best nights, the nights, the last 10 nights of Ramadan. The Prophet wasallam <clears throat> used to take good care of them. As we have in, in the authentic narrations like in Sahih Muslim and other than him, on the authority of Aisha radiallahu anha, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam كان يجتهد في العشر الأواخر من رمضان ما لا يجتهد في غيرها. We have a narration from Aisha, the mother of the believers. Aisha, the mother of the believers, رضي الله عنها, our mother. 
she narrates that <clears throat> she tells us what the Prophet ﷺ used to do. And Aisha and also the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, وَرَضِيَ anhun, they have narrated to us many good, alhamdulillah, and benefits as related to the life of the Prophet ﷺ, and especially as related to the things the Prophet ﷺ used to do at home, <clears throat> and especially at night, at the night time. And we learn from the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We learn from the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Make sure she's with you, barakallah, zakallah. <coughs> we don't want her to trip and get hurt. Okay, zakallah. <coughs> so Aisha radiallahu anha narrated to us that when the last ten days and nights of Ramadan arrives. What is the hadi of the Prophet ﷺ? Because we follow his guidance. You hear in the khutbah, every sermon, the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad ﷺ. And we as a human being, we want the best in anything. You want to drive the best cars. You want to live in the best houses. You want to eat the best food. You want to have the best friends. You want to have the best wife, the best, the, 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 the wife, she want to have her husband to be the best husband and the like. You have, you want your children to be the best at everything, whatever they do, from the things that get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is the best thing the Prophet used to do in these best nights? His, his guidance, she said he will be more diligent in them than any other nights and days in the year. Allahu Akbar. وفي رواية أخرى عنها أيضا رضي الله عنها قالت إذا دخل العشر أي من رمضان العشر الأواخر كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا دخل العشر شد مئزرة وأحيا ليلة وأيقظ أهله Likewise on the authority of our mother the mother of the believers عائشة رضي الله عنها She said that when the last ten of Ramadan arrived, the Prophet ﷺ shed izara. He tied his izar, kinaya, meaning that he is to forsake the, his desires that Allah has made halal for him. Of course, it's halal for a man to enjoy his wife on the night time of Ramadan, from Maghrib until Fajr. But the Prophet ﷺ used to give that for the sake of Allah to free himself for the ibadah. Wa ahya layla, and he used to revive his nights. With ibadah, as the ulama says, of course, by the salawat and the recitation of the Quran and the remembrance of Allah and the istighfar and the tasbih and the like and the preparing for suhoor, all of this from the a'mal al-khair, from the good actions. أهله, and also he used to wake his family, not just he wakes up, but he wake his family as well at the last ten so they can get the khair. So they can get this khair as well. We do the same thing when the last 10 days and nights of Ramadan come upon us if we're still alive, insha'Allah ta'ala. وَكَذَلِكَ فِي هَذِهِ الْعَشْرِ لَيْلَةِ هِيَ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٍ كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى إِنَّا أَنْزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهْر this surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, Surah Al-Qadr. About a night, a blessed and a noble night, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned its virtues and superiority that is better than a thousand months. The ulama, they says a thousand months of obedience and a worship and upon righteousness. One night, ibad Allah, subhanAllah. So we have to prepare ourselves from today. I got to free myself. Anything that's supposed to take me away from being amongst those who will benefit from this night, you got to cut it loose. <clears throat> Change your plans. Make arrangements. Now make arrangements from today. These are only 10 nights. They're going to come and they're going to go quick. As many nights of the likes has come and have departed us. Make arrangements. I want to be, inshallah ta'ala, free myself more, inshallah ta'ala, for ibadah, for the remembrance of Allah, for the recitation of the Quran, 
for visiting of the sick, sick people, giving some extra time for you, Ya Abdullah. Because whatever you do, you will see it on Yawm Al Qiyamah. وكذلك فيه زكاة الفطر in the last 10 days or nights of Ramadan the, the Muslims they prepare towards the end of Ramadan <coughs> to give zakat al-fitr and inshallah in another khutbah we may bring a more details and tafsil on zakat al-fitr but we just tell you one thing about it because some people they ask zakat al-fitr is a ibadah is an act of worship it is not zakat of wealth that's why it is called zakat al-fitr is related to the fitr, to the breaking of the fast, meaning at the end of Ramadan. So you don't give zakat al-fitr now, today. You don't give it if somebody already gave zakat a couple of days ago, or in the beginning of Ramadan. And you won't give it tomorrow or next week. The Prophet ﷺ tells us that it's time, because this is a ibadah. The same way, we don't pray dhuhr at 9 a.m. and say, hey, call it so I say, I got a lot of things to do today. You get up 9 o'clock in the morning, you pray dhuhr asr. And you go by your business. You can't do that. Because dhuhr has its time. And asr has its time. Aynam. Likewise, zakat al-fitr has its time. Likewise, hajj. Can you imagine somebody just go right now and made hajj? He said, look, Mina is empty. Arafat, Muzdalifa, mashallah, I'm just going to be the only one. So what is the problem? I'm going to go in Mina, I'm going to go to Arafat, I'm going to go to Muzdalifa, I'm going to go to Jamarat. MashaAllah, I made Hajj. Wrong. You cannot make Hajj according to your term and your time. We Muslims, we have to learn how to perform these acts of worship. Likewise, Zakat al-Fitr. It, is, it has a time to be given. And the Prophet he says, the best time of it is before Salat al-Eid. <coughs> The ulama they mentioned, but it is better to, it's also okay to give it, okay to give it a day or two before the Eid because of the actions of the Sahaba, Ridwanullah alayhim. And you give food, not money, ya ibadallah. Do you don't give money in this one here. Some people they say, what is the, the difference? All right, why don't you give money instead of fasting? All right, don't fast. Just give somebody hundred dollars and don't fast. Allah ghafur rahim, right? They're going to tell you, no, it doesn't work like that, brother. You have to fast. Why well, have to fast? Money is okay. People need money. I'm not going to fast today. I'm going to give some money. People need money. They're like, no, brother, because it's not legislated for you to give money like that. Fast and give money. We say the same thing. It is not legislated to give money for zakat al fitr Give it as the Prophet ﷺ gave it an order to give it. And if you know some people need cash, with zakat al-fitr, give them some extra cash, ya akhi malik. Give them some, if you have some cash you want to give them, you want to be generous, give zakat al-fitr from the food that the Prophet ﷺ legislated. You want to give some extra money, it's up to you, inshallah. Sallallahu alayhi wa lakum al-tawfiqa wa sadaad wa yazuqan wa iyaakum al-ilm al-nafi'a. المثمر للعمل الصالح أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه الغفور الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا به وتوحيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا عما بعد عباد الله أيها المسلمون علينا أن نغتنم هذه الفرصة العظيمة السانحة لنا في هذا الشهر الفاضل الفضيل شهر القرآن شهر الصيام شهر القيام شهر الذكر شهر الصدقات شهر التنافس في أعمال الخير شهر المغفرة شهر التوبة نعم we should compete one another and encourage one another to utilize our times especially in this blessed month in this great season of the month of Ramadan we compete one another and we, we, we recommend one another and we advise one another and we remind one another and especially in our times we have the gadgets you don't have to travel somewhere to remind somebody you can drop them a text message <clears throat> and there is so many ways now, alhamdulillah, 
Tell them, let us, ikhwan, it's only a couple more days, two more weeks, inshallah. Let us do good. Be mindful, inshallah ta'ala, of this great opportunity. Read more Quran. Give sadaqah. You we men, let us attend the masajid. Let us uh, fulfill the obligations. Be kind to our parents. Visit your parents. Help them out. Be good and nice to the elders. Be merciful to the youth and the little ones. Give sadaqah to the best of your ability. The best sadaqah is that which you give and you take care of your family members and your kin. The like. We advise one another. Because time is passing, ibadallah. And the time is precious. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, he says, Inna dunya irtahalat mudbira wal akhirah atat muqbila wa li kulli wahidin minhuma banoon فكونوا عباد الله أبناء الآخرة ولا تكونوا أبناء الدنيا فاليوم عمل ولا حساب وغدا حساب ولا عمل علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله عنه says this dunya is departing no doubt the hereafter is approaching and he says and both of them has children meaning people that long for them and, and want them and love them he says, both of them have children. So be from the children of the hereafter and don't be from the children of this dunya. Because today, in this life, you do actions and you don't see the reckoning in here. But on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, it will be a reckoning for your actions. Whereas you cannot do anything on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. If you find deficiency, then subhanallah. And yes, we can because we are not perfect that's why we should know and, 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 and acknowledge our deficiencies in this life and try to approve ourselves and to get closer to Allah because in Yawm Al-Qiyamah we can't do anything. You can't fast on the Day of Judgment to make up for some Ramadans. You cannot pray to make up from some of the Salawat. You have to do it here. Naam, ibad Allah. al muhim. Wal waqtu yajri. Wa kullama mada yawm. Iqtarabta ya ibad Allah ila al-qabr. كلما مدى يوم مدى بعد كما قال الحسن البصري أحد أئمة التابعين رحم الله والجميع قال يا عبد الله إنما أنت أيام كلما مدى يوم مدى بعدك نعم يا إخوان time is passing by quickly and as الحسن البصري one of the great imams of التابعين رحمهم الله جميعا ورحم المسلمين والمسلمات he says you you have you're nothing but numbers of days whenever a day go by a part of you is gone from your life span you're not going to go back to it فلذلك نحرص على الوقت فالوقت ثمين وخاصة الحمد لله لنا أعوان كثيرة في هذا الشهر we have to pay attention to the time time is very precious and especially now in Ramadan because when you look around, you, you come to the masjid, you find people already here in the masjid. You look around to the right, they read in Quran. To the left, they're remembering Allah. Somebody standing in a prayer, somebody crying, somebody's hands are in the air and asking Allah and begging. Somebody's competing with one another for sadaqat, for charities, people asking, Akhi, do you know anybody who needs zakat? Do you know any orphans, any this? Khair, kathir, alhamdulillah. So we have to utilize this time. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, said, La, 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 ya akhi, ya akhi, excuse me, give it back to him. In Jumu'ah we listen, inshallah. After Jumu'ah you can talk, you can do things, inshallah. But in Jumu'ah you just listen, inshallah ta'ala, and don't do anything, jazakumullah khairan. If somebody wants to talk to us or have a question, after the Salat, we'll be available, inshallah. But remember, from the etiquette of Jumu'ah, you don't talk to somebody. You cannot even say to someone, pay attention. <coughs> because this is considered laghu. Jazakum Allah khair and barakallahu feekum. Naam. The point I was making is that Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, Daya'u al-waqti ashaddu min al-mawt. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, wasting of time is worse than death. 
And he gave the explanation why. قال لأن الموت يقطعك عن الدنيا والأهل وضياع الوقت يقطعك عن الله وعن الآخرة. And he says because death severs you from this life and from your family while wasting time severs you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala getting closer to him earning his pleasure and severs you and cuts you from the hereafter. Naam, the time, ibad Allah. That's why we have so many narrations. We suffice with one, inshallah ta'ala. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi noble Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa nas al khair, he says, ikhtanim khamsan qabla khamsin. Take advantage of five things before other five things come upon you. Ikhtanim shababaka qabla haramik. The youth, listen. Take advantage of your youth before you become old. Because when you're young, you're strong. Have energy. And use it, ya Abdullah. Naam, your mind is free. You have no responsibilities. Alhamdulillah, you live with your parents or whoever is your guardian. They take care of your needs. Now you have a lot of time. What do you do with it? Keep playing around until when you grow up and now you have a job and a family. Now, oh, subhanAllah, I don't have time to do this or do that. Now you want to memorize Quran. Now you want to learn Arabic. Now you want to attend the classes. Now you want to do this and do that. And you're trapped. Subhanallah. Take advantage of it. Especially the youth. Because you're still young. You still can. وَصِحَّتَكَ قَبْلَ سَقَمِكَ The Prophet says, Take advantage of your health before you become ill, before you be affected and afflicted with, with illnesses. You're still strong. You're still healthy. Use it. To do all the good. Because tomorrow you may get sick. Tomorrow you may be afflicted with something. Now you can fast. You can stand in a prayer. You can do this. You can do that. Now you're still healthy. Do it, Ya Abdullah. Don't postpone. وَغِنَاكَ قَبْلَ فَقْرِكَ نعم. Take advantage of your wealth. Allah has favored you. You have some money, some extra, or you're wealthy, you're rich. Be grateful to Allah and spend it in the venues. You're supposed to be looking for people, not wait until somebody knock at your door, your office. You're supposed to be looking for the widow, for the orphans, for the needy, the people that have debts and they cannot pay. You're supposed to be buying books of, of Ahlul Sunnah al Jama'ah and give them away. You're supposed to be sponsoring some orphan, pay for their education. Building the masajid that are established upon, Ahlus, upon the sunnah and upon the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah وسلم, Helping people to pay their debts. You'll be looking for them because it's good for you. Don't wait until somebody come to you. You'll be looking because I have this money. What am I going to do with it? What am I going to do with it? Put it in a bank and collect interest? This is haram. Now I'm going to look for the widows because of this. That woman or those family, those children, they get up at night. The last third of the night, make dua for you, ya akhi. La ilaha illallah. Wa faragaka qabla shughlik. Likewise, the fourth advice, take advantage of your time. You have some free time? Don't just wander there and say, what I'm going to do? I'm stuck. SubhanAllah, hey, what, what do you think we should do today? You don't know what you do today? Read Quran. Remember Allah. Spend some good time with your parents. Tell them, listen, go for a walk with your grandmother. Take them for a, for a lunch or a dinner, of course, outside Ramadan. is, uh, Inshallah, you take them for lunch and a dinner and a breakfast. Be nice to them. If you have scales, go take care of their cars, their houses. Cut their grass. If you cannot, pay for it. Take advantage of your... Come early to the masjid. Spend time with the people who they want the hereafter. They want the pleasure of Allah. One, you're going to be busy one day. And you wish if, you, if those days when you have a lot of time will come and they may not come. Wallahu a'lam. And the last advice, Hayataka qabla mawtik. That's what the Prophet ﷺ advises. Take advantage of your life before your death. And we know that is certain. Next moment is not for any one of us. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.
والقيام والأعمال الصالحات صلى الله أن يغفر لنا ولكم وللمسلمين والمسلمات والمستضعفين من المسلمين من المسلمين والمسلمات اللهم انصر المستضعفين من المؤمنين في كل مكان يا رب العالمين اللهم انصرهم على الطغاة والظالمين الغاشمين يا رب العالمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين واهزم أعداءك أعداء الدين وصلى الله وسلم على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا